screenwriting is a crucial step in the filmmaking process. Without a script, there's no movie. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. But sometimes, actors on set can come up with ideas on the spot that are even better than the script in hand. Sometimes, it's just a one-off joke, or something inconsequential. But other times, an improvised moment can surpass expectations and become a crucial moment in the film. So let's check out some of our favorite improvised moments that filmmakers just had to keep. But before we do that, don't forget to take a moment to subscribe to Screen Rant for more awesome videos just like this one. And if you're looking for a brain teaser, here's our emoji trivia of the day. Can you guess the title of this movie based solely off of these emojis? We'll let you know the answer at the end of this video, so stay tuned! Oh, we're gonna need more wax! I'm staying. The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Michael Scott may be infamous for his terrible improv, but the actor who plays him, Steve Carell, has some of the best improv chops in Hollywood today. So it's no wonder that some of his best moments from Judd Apatow's 2005 hit, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, were completely unscripted. There are a lot of improvised moments throughout the film, but the best one has to be the infamous chest waxing scene. A behind-the-scenes video revealed that Carell actually had his chest waxed, for real. And his responses were completely unscripted. Carell seemed confident going into filming, even going so far as to say he was confident that it wouldn't hurt nearly as much as people say. But judging by some of his reactions... The fuzzy-chested actor may have underestimated what he was about to undergo. Since they were actually ripping hairs out of Steve Carell's chest, the cast and crew really only had one chance to get this scene right. So they were forced to keep all of Carell's hysterical improvised reactions. Oh, oh, soccer mother! Thankfully, it worked out for the best. This is one of the most memorable and hair-raising scenes in comedy history. You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Based on the cherished book by Roald Dahl, 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is a family classic. Starring the great Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka masterfully takes us on a journey through his chocolate factory, filled with mystery, music, and of course, Oompa Loompas. Wilder's performance is unforgettable, and it's a big part of what makes the film such an enduring classic. You should open your mouth a little wider when you speak. But Wilder had one big caveat upon accepting the role of Wonka. He told director Mel Stewart that he would perform the role on one condition. He could devise his own entrance. So when Wonka hobbles out of the factory with a cane, sticks it into one of the cobblestones, and falls into a risky somersault, it was all Gene. He told Stewart he wanted to make this entrance because from that time on, no one will know if I'm lying or telling the truth. Mel Stewart was bound by his agreement with Wilder to keep the entrance no matter what. Thankfully, Wilder was right. It turned out to be a perfect introduction to the wacky chocolatier, and we think it achieved the mysterious aura that Wilder was going for. There's no need to stop me, Peter. The Amazing Spider-Man. 2012's The Amazing Spider-Man was Sony's successful attempt at a post raimi Spider-Man reboot. The film starred Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, and retold the origin story of Spider-Man. It was both a critical and commercial success, becoming the highest grossing reboot at the time. A sequel was released two years later, before Parker eventually made the jump to the MCU in Captain America Civil War. In one scene in the film, Parker arrives at the police station to enlist the help of Captain Stacy, played by Dennis Leary. During their conversation, Leary cracks a very subtle joke that compares the antagonist, Dr. Connors, to Godzilla, asking Parker let me ask you a question. Do I look like the mayor of Tokyo? Leary improvised that joke on the spot, and it had the director, aptly named Mark Webb, cracking up on set. So he decided he had no choice but to keep the sly joke. Sony had originally envisioned The Amazing Spider-Man as the first in a new franchise of interconnected films that would compete with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. When those plans were cancelled, Marvel worked out a deal to give Parker a home in the MCU. Spidey's latest reboot, Spider-Man Homecoming, hits theaters on July 7th. Who are you? It's not important. Are you a ghost? Zoolander. 2001 Zoolander stars Ben Stiller as the air-headed male model Derek Zoolander. The international star becomes a pawn in a corrupt plot to assassinate the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Despite the rather tame nature of the film, it was actually banned in Malaysia because of the way the country is depicted in the movie. Nonetheless, the film was a success and has since enjoyed a bit of a cult following. As the characters try to make sense of the plot in which Derek has become entangled, they enlist the help of David Duchovny's character, a former hand model who works in a graveyard. Duchovny makes an incredible speech, revealing the corrupt political system which has been hypnotizing male models for years. During one take, Ben Stiller forgot his next line, so he simply repeated his original question. But why male models? You serious? I just... I just told you that a moment ago. Duchovny improvised right back, and the two created comedy gold. 
Unfortunately, the film's 2016 sequel didn't fare as well as the original. But fans can enjoy another crack at the franchise with the animated series, Zoolander Supermodel, which sees the original cast return, along with some new voices, including Jenny Slate, Nick Kroll, and even Tim Gunn. Midnight Cowboy Based on the novel by James Leo Herlihy, 1969's Midnight Cowboy stars Dustin Hoffman and John Voight in the story of a Texan dishwasher who flees to New York City. The film won three Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay, and earned a spot on the American Film Institute's list of the 100 Greatest American Films of All Time. Probably the most famous line in the movie comes from Dustin Hoffman himself, when he slams the hood of a taxi and yells, hey, I'm walking here! I'm walking here! Up yours, you son of a me that way. Get out of here. This line was completely unscripted and came as a result of the unique shooting circumstances for the film. The scene was shot on a real busy street instead of a fake set, so there was actually real traffic whizzing through the shot. As Hoffman and Voigt were crossing the street, a real cab got in their way. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Hoffman revealed that he said, I'm walking here, meaning we're shooting a scene here, and this is the first time we ever got it right. Thankfully, Hoffman has great impulses, and his commitment to staying in character meant that filmmakers could actually turn this outtake into one of the most memorable moments in cinematic history. Not bad. Not bad. Hi. The Dark Knight. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight is the unforgettable second installment in the Dark Knight trilogy. The film sees Christian Bale's Batman go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Joker in a breathtaking performance by Heath Ledger. When the Joker devises a scheme to blow up a hospital, he disguises himself as a nurse to sneak in and out of the area. In the original script, the Joker was supposed to have a pretty slick bad guy moment after the explosions detonate. Ledger was supposed to hop on a school bus, and the bus would drive away as the hospital went up in flames. But in a moment of pure improvisation, Ledger pauses and fiddles with the remote detonator before the explosion finally pops off behind him. Because it's all part of the plan. This moment feeds into what makes Ledger's Joker so incredible. He adds a touch of dark humor to everything he does. Thankfully, this moment went well, as I imagine a few execs would not have been happy if Ledger ruined an expensive shot with a bunch of explosions in the background. Maybe they kept the shot to avoid reshooting the scene. No matter the reason, we're glad this little moment made it into the final release. <laughs> Dr. Strangelove. Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, is Stanley Kubrick's 1964 black comedy about the threat of nuclear war between the US and the Soviet Union. If that doesn't seem to you like great fodder for a comedy, we can't really blame you for being skeptical. But Kubrick's direction, along with Peter Sellers' unforgettable performance, created one of the best comedy films of all time. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room. Sellers embellished a lot with the script. Most notably, his character is meant to be confined to a wheelchair for the entirety of the film. But during shooting for the final scene, Sellers decided to stand up. Monsieur has been walked! and really make a meal out of his miraculous recovery. In fact, Peter Sellers improvised so much during the filming process that Kubrick had to retro-script the film after shooting. In other words, he reworked the script entirely in order to incorporate Sellers' major improvisations into the film. It's a good thing, too, because the film has become an enduring classic, earning a spot for preservation in the National Film Registry. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? The Godfather. What is there to say about The Godfather that hasn't already been said? This 1972 crime epic, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, is widely regarded as one of the best films of all time, period. The American Film Institute listed it as second only to Citizen Kane on their list of the greatest films of American cinema. In one scene, Marlon Brando, as Vito Corleone, is speaking to Bonacera, played by Salvatore Corsito. As he ruminates on ideas of friendship, he holds and pets a cat in his hands. This has become a powerful and memorable piece of imagery from the film, but it turns out it was entirely unplanned. The cat in the scene is actually a stray cat that just wandered on set. Yeah, that's right. Coppola spotted the feline and just decided to plop it into Brando's hands without so much as a word. But that's not the only improvised moment that made the final cut in The Godfather. When Paul E. betrays Vito Corleone, Capo Peter Clemenza orders Rocco Lampone to carry out a hit on him. Richard Castellano, who plays Clemenza, was supposed to say, leave the gun. But he improvised the now infamous line, Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Take the cannoli, taking inspiration from a scene earlier in the script. Now that's quick thinking. Or maybe Castellano was just hungry. Drop it now! Hey, cool man, no problem. No problem at all. 
Guardians of the Galaxy. 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy follows Peter Quill, portrayed by Chris Pratt, and a group of alien thieves. The film features a stellar cast, an awesome script, and plenty of great fight scenes. So it's no surprise the movie was a box office smash and earned plenty of critical acclaim as well. Chris Pratt is a master of comedic improv. He already proved that time and again during his stint on Parks and Recreation. So it's no surprise he flexed his improv muscles and his other muscles on the big screen for Guardians. In a self-referential scene, Pratt improvised a moment in which his character is disappointed that his cap didn't recognize who he was. Who? Well, Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw. Not only does this tie in perfectly with the film and give us a glimpse into Star-Lord's charm, but it's directly referencing the fact that the Guardians of the Galaxy were way less well-known compared to other superheroes in the MCU. Well, we all know who the Guardians are now. They've earned their continued spot in the MCU with a successful sequel released this year. Director-writer James Gunn has already confirmed he'll return for the yet unannounced third installment in the franchise. You ever tried shawarma? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. The Avengers. Our favorite work of on-screen improv comes from 2012's The Avengers. The final film in the first phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe saw the misfit team of heroes finally come together to form an unstoppable super team. In a climactic scene in the film, Tony Stark nearly falls to his death after guiding a missile out of the Earth's path. After the Hulk catches him and brings him safely down to street level, he opens his eyes and asks the Avengers team, what's next? Robert Downey Jr. apparently improvised a number of different lines before his suggestion for shawarma ended up making the final cut. Director Joss Whedon still didn't have a post credit scene when the actors all got together again for the film's initial premiere. It would be his only chance to get everyone in the same room again. So, he turned RDJ's improv into a full scene for the end of the film, collecting all of the Avengers together again for a silent, and hilarious, moment of relief at the broken down shawarma joint. Fun fact, Chris Evans keeps his hand over his face for the entirety of the scene because he had grown out a beard for another movie and couldn't shave it for the scene. Well, that's a wrap on our latest video. Did your favorite improvised moment make it on this list? Are there any we missed? Who's the greatest improviser in film history? Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Screen Rant for more. And in case you were still guessing, here's the answer to today's emoji trivia question.